Vinaka, you've tuned into Talk Business. And to all our viewers who are joining us from around the region via Sky Pacific, welcome to the show. This week on Talk Business, we take you to Navua to feature a business that has given aquaculture a whole new meaning. They're farming crabs in huge ponds and mangrove pans. That's right. And the crab company Fiji will argue that it's quite possible. Join us over the next half hour as we show you what a little ingenuity, innovation and hard work can achieve. Who doesn't love a serving of one of our most delicious seafood delicacies? the mud crab. Whether it's curry, michi or simply boiled, it's been long on the menu for most families here. But you and I will both agree that catching crabs in the wild isn't as easy as throwing a bait and hooking fish. Nor does it come cheap either. A string of crabs can cost you an arm and a leg. So what if you could actually farm your own crabs? That's what aquaculture is all about. Mud crab aquaculture is the practice of farming crabs in huge ponds like this or through cage pen culture in mangroves like this. In fact, it has been practiced for many years in Southeast Asia, where in countries like the Philippines, it's a major export commodity. So what's stopping Fiji from tapping into this potential? Will Colibrats, the man behind the crab company Fiji, realized this some years ago? The government of Kosrai uh, in Micronesia uh, asked me if I could identify a mud crab farming specialist. And I thought, well, you know, crabs do eat one another, they're cannibalistic, how is that possible? But being a true consultant, of course, you do find somebody that can help them with it. And um, I found a specialist in Australia, Dr. Colin Shelley. And uh, he went to Kosrae and I happened to meet there with him. And Kosrae is a very small island country, less than 10,000 people, less than one flight a day coming in, yeah, in the Northern Pacific. And uh, he discussed that, yeah, he said, no, you can do crab farming. We're doing it in Australia. We are, it's been done in uh, Vietnam, in the Philippines. And I thought, well, if Kosrae can do that, in Fiji we have airlines coming in so many more and flying to so many more places. We have so many more mangroves, mangroves. And I thought, if we can do this in Kosrae, then we can do this in Fiji much better. And since then, he hasn't looked back. How can he, when the business rakes in good money and is one of its kind? In 2011, he bought this defunct prawn farm and began farming mud crabs. But of course, farming would mean starting from square one, the spawning process. And that's what a hatchery is meant to do. Here at the marine campus at the University of the South Pacific is a hatchery where the crablets or baby crabs are nurtured until they're large enough to move to man-made ponds. The hatchery production of mud crabs is a relatively recent innovation. It's the technical science of growing crabs outside the wild to increase their chances of survival. For the crab company, the hatchery is a crucial component to growing their business. Not only does it provide consistent supply of crablets to nurture into large crabs, but it also provides the opportunity to increase production to meet local demand. We've had uh, several good runs, yeah. I mean, not up to the levels that we would really want them to sustain the whole export, um, if we start an export production. Um, but we've uh, generated uh, 50, 60, 70,000 crablets uh, from the hatchery that we've stocked the ponds with. Due to the technical nature of aquaculture, it can be a risky business. But that's why you have the experts to lead the charge. Totongano is a Filipino who has 15 years of experience in crab farming. He is the farm manager and is in charge of nurturing the crablets from the hatchery. Crabs from the nursery in USP are transported here by placing it inside the plastic bags, oxygenate it, and we are putting down the temperature of the water so that uh, the crabs will not molt. And 
there you have it. The little well, crabs, one even ready to pounce. Before this pond is nets are prepared, is installed, we are uh, preparing the ponds by letting the natural food grow in this, fill up with water. Ponds are prepared that we are uh, seeing to it that there is no other big crabs inside so that they could uh, uh, eat this, uh, bite these uh, nets around here. Now crabs are cannibalistic in nature and will eat their own if need be, which is why extra care must be taken in these ponds. The crabs grow faster compared to the ones in the hatchery. Since hatchery has all the artificial things there, artificial oxygen, artificial feeds, artificial nets. But in the ponds, we could see lots of natural food. It takes three to four weeks for each crablet to reach about one to two centimeters. There's about 8,800 crablets in this pond, which were brought from the hatchery. And they have a 50% chance of survival here much higher than in the wild. Once at the nursery, it'll take another one to two months to reach between five to 10 centimeters or 30 grams. From the hatchery to harvest, it can take around 12 months for a single crab to mature. The crab company is currently working on an outgrower program to establish a year-round supply of high-quality crab offering income-generating opportunities in coastal villages, particularly for women. So we hopped onto a boat to find out just what these opportunities are. <laughs> culture, where nets like these are placed around the mangroves to keep the crabs within their natural habitat. Inside these pans are around 1,200 crabs, which are fed twice a day and harvested every six months. We are testing these ones out. They've been done in other countries uh, in Asia. So for us, this is the first uh, trial that we have. We have three hectares of uh, each of 2,500 meters. And uh, as you'll see, even with the normal fishing grounds, yeah, this area is still open for the fishermen from the nearby villages. And this we have closed out, we've discussed it with them as a uh, trial and a test as well on how feasible the mangrove pens are. So what are the chances of crabs surviving here than in the ponds? The ponds is, uh, is high intensity production. Yeah, easily accessible, easily drained, easier to manage. Yeah, um, but ponds are of course a lot more expensive to set up and to maintain. Yeah, this is natural. Yeah, this is only, the only cost basically here is the net and the fence to put around the mangroves. The idea behind this cluster concept is to get villagers to farm mud crabs along the mangroves and supply it to the crab company. If this is to become an export industry, we will be working with communities. And that's been the, only, the idea from even before we even started business. In these communities where uh, mangroves are, and of course, where mangroves are, there's very limited. There won't be any tourism development, uh, low-lying areas, you can, a lot of root crops you can't grow there. So this will provide an, an, a significant means, we expect, for generating income, especially for women. It's an initiative which has the full backing of the European Union-funded Increasing Agricultural Commodity Trade Programme, or IACT, and even the Market Development Facility, facilitated by AusAid. The biggest change would have, uh, challenge would have to be with the hatchery itself, uh, producing enough uh, crablets to supply uh, the farms and keep consistently fully stocked. I think uh, these are being overcome. Uh, we have some technical expertise, there's some training being obtained by some of the staff and uh, slowly step by step they are making a difference. Uh, we've identified areas where we can get new breeders uh, and that seems to be helping as well. We hope that this model serves as an example for how a business could work with the villagers. So we see initially few villagers coming on board and as the market there's a huge demand for crab farming. So hopefully with the demand and hatchery supply being solved, you could see multiple villagers coming on board. <music> The 
idea that one could farm crabs through aquaculture is a new phenomenon in Fiji. Wilco's farm is the only kind in the country that cultivates crablets into full-grown crabs fit for the export market. Water is pumped from the Navua River and runs through the channel through to the crab ponds. There are two basic forms of land-based mud crab culture practices. It's either the fattening of crabs with low flesh content or the growing out of juveniles to market size. And that's where all the food comes in. This freezer stores all waste pieces and guts of fish which have been gathered from fish canneries. Then the meat is crushed further into smaller portions for the crablets and larger crabs. It's a hearty meal that's meant to fatten the crabs. Now we're off to catch some crabs from the pond. If you know anything about catching crabs, you know that it's hardly a walk in the park. There's technique involved that requires skills. So we first have to use bait to get them hooked. And what better than a whole fish? Once the bait is ready, it needs to be placed firmly in the frame to attract the crabs. And now we're ready to feed the hungry crabs. We throw in the bait and the waiting game begins. And several get hooked. We open the cage and out they come. In the next pond not too far off, there's a spectacular scene. In fact, I've seen nothing like this before and can only imagine many haven't either. Take a look at that. So many large crabs in one place. Can you imagine what they would taste like in Lolo? This entire pond has thousands of crabs. And here's how you catch them barehanded.
This is premium A-grade crab, fit for the export market. The crabs are then tied up carefully, just the claws, leaving room to ensure the crustacean isn't stressed. Now they're ready to be packed and off to the packaging center they go. The crabs must be thoroughly washed first. Now to the packaging bit for export. Each crab weighs just over 500 grams. That's good value for money. It's a thorough process that requires delicate packaging as the crabs are live and exported as fresh, live mud crabs. Meeting the local mud crab demand has been a challenge since the inception of the crab company. That's because resorts and large restaurants can't seem to get enough of these crabs. The comments of the chefs of major resorts like uh, Sofitel, like the Hilton, like Shangri-La, the Fijian, and uh, some, the Pearl here, and several others of these uh, our clients yeah, that are consistent the ordering crabs from us that are very happy about the quality, that praise it highly, yeah, and uh, yeah, they are, yeah, that helps us also in, in developing an export market, but that has keeping us going as well. So we thought, let's find out for ourselves. We're here at the Governor's Restaurant in the capital to witness how tasty these homegrown crabs are, from the farm to the table. We're cooking fresh mud crabs from the crab company in Navua. We have with us Chef Jerry with Annie and Po who will be cooking us crab lolo. So tell us Chef, what are we expecting today? We will need the crab. Uh, we buy a crab from uh, the farm in Navua. Uh, and then uh, once that is bought in, we cook the crab and then we debone. Here's the shell. It's nicely cleaned there, ready for the stuffing. Uh, this is the crab meat. It's uh, already uh, been um, cleaned from the shell. Uh, we will need uh, tomatoes. Here we have cut up tomatoes, uh, red onions. We have some uh, spring onions there, that's shallots. And uh, this, uh, uh, we mix this and then make it into salsa and then we stuff it in. These crabs almost to the same sizes and it's very presentable when you have it on the plate. You're going to take the shell and you're going to fill the meat inside. So. I'm going to add a bit of uh, that thick laurel into the, into the crab so that the moisture is uh, in there. Now the crab is ready to bake. 
we're gonna put inside the baking tray with a little bit of uh, low. How long does it go in the oven for? Uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So Annie, what are we serving the crab with today? Uh, the crab is served with uh, sweet potato, kumala. Uh, we have uh, different types of kumala. Here we serve it with uh, the, this is the orange one. So now we in the final uh, presentation, which is the plating. There you have it, a final two in uh, at the governor's restaurant uh, in Suma. In any given week, the crab company can sell about 150 to 200 kilos of crabs, but in a few months, this will increase to around 350 to 400 kg as the company embarks on further expansion plans. You don't have to import anything. Yeah? We feed it waste fish that we get from the fish processors. Yeah? We can buy some additional pelletized feeds as well that are produced here. Maybe we have to bring a little bit in from overseas. Yeah? Um, the nets, yes, they have to come from overseas, but for the rest, what else do we need from overseas? It's a crab that we have, the world will want it, yeah, the world demands seafood, crabs are very highly priced, and uh, it, it is there, it is, well, we're now in the process of developing an export market, and that's, I think that's at the moment the key uh, thing. Which is why there's no secret to the potential for growth in the aquaculture business. I see definitely a lot of potential for growth uh, in crab and other aquaculture for commodities, uh, especially on the community angle, like we talked about clusters, uh, whereby you've got groups of farmers within communities and we can see that uh, the company can, once they've reached a certain capacity, they can go and train out people and do extension services and other things and this whole industry can grow uh, within Fiji and into other countries as well. I see this as a good mo business model to replicate. I see this as a business model to benefit the villagers. So, great going. Without MDF and without IACT, it would have been yeah, it would have been very difficult. Their support has been substantial, yeah, both from technical, the technical side, as well as, as some financial side. I mean, it's all been on a cost-sharing basis. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, they've helped us to reach this point, uh, definitely. And, and that support is, is uh, still continuing. With the endless opportunities on offer, the crab company knows too well that with a little ingenuity, the sky's the limit. First, to get actually all the ponds under production, get them all stocked up, then expand uh, maybe a few more hatchery pens, uh, hatchery sorry uh, pens, get the hatchery running, of course, yeah, but that can all go simultaneously, and uh, probably by the end of the year we start looking, or in the second half of the year we start looking at working with communities. Identify, I mean, several communities have already. I uh, indicated and confirmed that keenness in, in working with us and setting it up. Um, so we'll start working with them to set up the first mangrove pens. And yeah, of course, but by that time we need, we should have developed an initial export market by then that can take the product. Yeah, or at least, and, and of course, increase domestic consumption quite a bit. <laughs> Everyone's happy about our crabs. And that wraps the show for this week. Send me an email and tell me what you think of the show. Talk business at fijitv.com.fj. Remember, you can catch me on the net on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash talkbusiness and also find us on Facebook www.facebook.com slash talkbusiness and if you have a Twitter account follow me at Rachna Fiji TV thank you for joining us I'll see you next week same time at a different location right here on Fiji One until then have a productive week